Okay, so I work at Save the Children, and you may not know that Save the Children works in 120 countries, including the U.S. We strive to give every last child a healthy start, the opportunity to learn, and protection from harm every day and in times of crisis. On a personal note, I'm Mario in this photo here. And my identical twin brother is Luigi. I have the real mustache, by the way. That's how you differentiate us. In the inset photo, you'll see a picture of us breaking the Guinness World Record for the longest tennis rally. That's a story for another time. Regarding online games, our first experience in this phenomenon, this movement called Gaming for Good, occurred in 2011 after the Japan earthquake and tsunami. And one of our partners, Zynga, reached out to us and rapidly set up a fundraiser across all of their social games on Facebook, Farmville, Yoville, Cafe World. And in one day, they raised $1 million for Save the Children. Within one week, $2 million, and within one month, $3 million. And at that moment, I knew that this was transformative. This was a disruptive innovation in how we can raise money from new markets and new people in a different way. Since then, we've raised more than $20 million, including institutional matching grants from events like Project for Awesome, also known as P4A, by the YouTubers John and Hank Green, known as the Vlog Brothers. You may know John from his books, The Fault in Our Stars, you may know Hank as from VidCon, founding VidCon and from SciShow and other YouTube channels. And in fact, I'm wearing their Project for Awesome socks, which I got as a donation perk during P4A. We also have worked with PewDiePie. He's the most popular YouTuber, YouTuber in the world. If you haven't heard of him, he has more than 42 million subscribers. And he did a fundraiser to celebrate his 25 million subscriber milestone. And finally, our most prolific fundraiser, who goes by the gaming name of Athene. His real name is Bashir Bumaza, but gamers typically have pseudonyms, and his is named Athene. So I'd like to tell you a story about Athene today. In 2012, we were struggling to raise awareness and funds for a food and hunger crisis in the Horn of Africa, in East Africa. So when he reached out to me and said, how can I help? I said, we have a $500,000 matching grant challenge. It was from one of our corporate partners, DC Entertainment. And we need to try to raise the rest. Would you take that challenge on? And he said, yeah, I'll do it. Under one condition, if you send me to the field so that I can live stream to my fans. I said, okay, let's do it. So they started a fundraise. And what's interesting is, as a gamer, he's really competitive. So he set up a goal. He gamified the goal. 100 days to raise $1 million, which before the match would mean he'd have to raise $5,000 every single day for 100 days. For a private individual doing this voluntarily, that's really difficult. But he assembled a crew, a volunteer crew. This is me visiting them with my epic moustache. When I joined the stream, they gave me a gaming nickname called me Epic Moustache Man. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know, his audience does skew a little younger. Maybe all of them don't have facial hair because I don't think my moustache is that epic. But anyways, you see the green screen in the background, so they would broadcast themselves playing games, very much like you can see on Twitch or YouTube gaming these days. And that's how they fundraise every day. Sometimes they would leave the live stream open for 16 hours out of the 24-hour day in order to reach their daily goal. It was quite difficult. So the first time, about a month in, that they were at risk of missing their goal. In fact, they missed it that day. They turned off the live stream, real dejected, and then while they were off the air, a donor made a couple thousand dollar gift, putting them over their daily milestone. They went back on the stream, they asked him why. 
And he said he was a fan for many years. And he was a Marine. He donated his entire paycheck to a theme and at the time, Operation Sharecraft. And what you'll notice is there is game mechanics at play here, as you can see in the background. And you'll see a, a chat room, and you'll see morale here crying. Because w when he was so generous to donate, she broke down and cried. As you can see, he's laughing. So I, say, I like to say that crying and laughter are two sides of the same coin emotionally. As they continued, you'll see that they had other challenges along the way. And when they were going to possibly miss the goal, they had to be very creative. And they had to, with game mechanics, they had to be creative in how they reached their daily goal. So they came up with a point system and rewards. They acknowledged people in real time and thanked them for participating. You'll see here, we had an idea. We had an idea to do a, a voluntary fast-a-thon because we felt that people couldn't empathize with children who were starving. And so we set up a voluntary fast-a-thon where people would challenge to fast for 24 hours voluntarily, or you can skip a meal or a snack, consult your doctor first before you attempt to do anything like that. So he took that idea of a fast-a-thon to an extreme, as he typically does, and he went on a 10-day fast, a 10-day hunger strike, until the media picked up the story. So my legal department approached me and said, you know, at, that's my nickname, at, uh, you know, you gotta have a theme eat. Um, we, we don't, you know, we don't uh, condone this sort of activity. And uh, I said, yeah, but I, I, first of all, I can't force him to eat. A and secondly, uh, he said, well, then you're going to have to have him stop fundraising. I said, if we have him stop fundraising, he'll never fundraise for us ever again. So we didn't endorse the activity. We didn't condone it, but we allowed it. And sure enough, on day 10, I remember getting the first earned media call, one of many, when they started picking up the story. And then he started to eat again. But some of his haters and trolls, he's a polarizing persona online, thought that he was eating or drinking behind the scenes when he was off air. So as a typical gamer and live streamer would do, he broadcast a 24-hour live stream even when he was sleeping, as you can see in that box there, to prove that he wasn't eating. This video, which you'll see in a moment, talks about another epic win during their marathon of fundraising. The situation in East Africa became insecure, and therefore we couldn't send him to the field. But we did the next best thing. We sent a BGAN portable satellite battery operated. There was no power, there's no connectivity, so that they could live stream from the field to their audience. And this is his videographer, Reese, who's interacting with a nine-year-old boy, Wasame, on the ground, so his audience could see who was benefiting from the revenue, to see in real time where the money was going, and so they can interact with the beneficiary. Since he was a minor, we had a staff member there moderating and translating all questions.
So they broke through. And the rest of the way, they not only reached their goal that day, but they surpassed their expected goal. And on day 82 of their quest to 100 days, they were on the verge of reaching the $1 million milestone. And then on a Friday afternoon, I can still remember it, our analyst runs into my office and she says, Ed, there's some suspicious donations in the amount of $25,000 that need to be charged back. So I notified the gamers and said, you're gonna have to move the thermometer back 25K. That represents five days of fundraising. So they were devastated, they were saddened, and Athene did the honorable thing and he transparently and truthfully shared that information with this community. The community was mad at the perpetrator and they were sad that they were not gonna break their goal. And the reason why it was significant because that weekend they were scheduled to appear on stage at DreamHack, the largest gaming festival in the world taking place in Sweden. And they wanted to break this milestone on stage and now they were 25K behind plan. So we did the only thing that a self-respecting, venerable charity would do. We pranked them. So on the live stream, my brother shows up and pretends that I shaved my mustache as a pledge for donations. You know how you receive from charities a calendar in the mail and you feel guilty that you got to donate? So I said, you know what, everybody? I've had my mustache for 20 years, even before I was married. I will shave my mustache if you all pledge. People started pledging their donations. I walked out of the room. My twin brother comes in, who doesn't wear a mustache, and he fooled everybody. Then I come in and reveal the prank. They were dying, as you see. And it, what it did was it lifted the spirits of everybody in the room. And we added the fun to fundraising by doing this. So we left the broadcast, and I remember going home thinking, you know, what a try, they almost had it. But then a day and a half later, the most unexpected thing happened. And so they did. And so the lessons learned here, are, as you see, they gamified their goal, as gamers would do to get to their quest. And they did a lot of innovative things that were disruptive along the way. So since then, last year we created a new initiative at Save the Children called Be a Life Force for Children. And I'll close with this brief video which talks about it. It would be great if all of you would check it out and join us.
Thank you for your time and attending. If you'd like to check out more about Life Force, it's on the web at savethechildren.org forward slash Life Force. If you want to learn more about Athene's work with us, savethechildren.org forward slash Athene. We've run out of time, so if you have any questions for me, tweet them at me. My Twitter is at Ettore Rossetti, and if you want to follow Save the Children and learn more about our work, follow us at Save the Children. Thank you very much.